What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and we are on part two of the Willie's hood. So I've already gone ahead and scraped all this off, wire wheeled it, kind of brushed it so that you can see most of the base material. There's a little bit of undercoating underneath the hood. I took that off too. It's important to have clean material when you're using a hammer and a dolly. You want the surfaces to be touching the metal. You don't want any grime or grit inside there. We left it there for the heavy hits out because at that point it doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna start with is just selecting a dolly for this area, which is gonna be something pretty shallow. This is a shallow curve. I've got a radius gauge here. This part is untouched, so I know that that's a 36 inch radius. It doesn't matter now, but when we choose the dies for our planishing hammer, that's, that's how I find out what I'm gonna use. I've got a 6.0 on this side here. I'll be using a die for that as well to reshape this end. Right now, I'm gonna use the slapper, which is the one that I made out of a leaf spring. This guy right here. This is kind of my go-to. I love this, uh, this dolly. It's got a nice weight. I'm gonna stick the dolly underneath and I'm gonna hit all the high spots. When I was using my grinder with the stripping disc on it, you can see it's highlighted some of those crinkles. That's our big dent. You can sort of see it right here. Those are the outer crinkles of the dent. There's not a whole lot of damage past that, little bit of ripples here. And then when we pop that dent out, all these other little crinkles happened as we were popping the dent out. So we're gonna start just one by one, smoothing everything out. We'll go over it multiple times. Let's just get started. All right, so what I said before about the hammer on, dolly off technique, that means that the high spots are where I'm hitting down and the dolly is pushing up on the low spots. I don't want the dolly directly under where I'm hitting, I want it pushing up on anything low. For example, let's do a close up here, this little spot right here. It's a bit low here and there's a high spot right there. So my dolly is gonna touch the bottom of this low. I'm gonna push up and I'm gonna hammer down on this high ridge here. And that goes for the rest of it. So we're, we're gonna work the dolly on the lows pushing up and we're gonna work the hammer on the highs pushing down. And that's what we're gonna do. I might need a lower chair so I can reach up underneath there. pushing up on this spot here, and I'm trying to hammer on that ridge. So I'm gonna kind of use that technique all over here right now, just hammering down on all the highs and pushing up on all the lows. We'll just go over the whole thing. Okay, so now we got the uh, couple of rounds of hammer and dolly work, just slapping these creases out of it and smoothing it all out. It's pretty, pretty good. A lot of this stuff is out of here now. Now comes the time when you wanna be really careful of your dolly choice and your hammer choice. In the first video, you might have heard me say, finding the perfect dolly and hammering right on it that's when you're stretching the metal, that that wasn't the time for it. It wasn't, but now it is the time for it. We're not trying to stretch the metal per se, but we're trying to planish it. So it's important to find the right curved dolly or something as close as you can get and you hold it underneath and basically we're, we're hitting it a bunch of times with the hammer trying to smooth it all out even further. The contact patch of your hammer, you wanna overlap that and just work it and work it and work it. This is what a planishing hammer typically looks like. It's a very shallow crown on the head of the hammer and you'll just use it from the top. I mean, I'm talking thousands of hits if you wanna make it perfect. Right now, I think that most body shops would just go for it. I don't know, I've heard in bodywork industry, I'm not a Bondo guy, not a paint guy. You know, an eighth inch of Bondo is kind of the max. There would be less than an eighth of an inch of Bondo in it right now. But I like to planish them out as good as I can. Another helpful tool is a planishing hammer, which hits it, you know, some of them are 5,000, some of them are 10,000 hits a minute. 
And that's what I mean is that you can, you can actually choose your die and planish all of this back smooth. So here, again, is the radius gauge. I've got uh, a 36 inch radius there. So I'd like to choose a 36 inch radius bottom die for the planishing hammer. This is a planishing hammer that I've made. It's a portable planishing hammer. You can kind of see on the wall, I've got all different sizes of planishing hammers. Something that I'll probably sell one day, but we're, we're kind of shop testing them right now. There's others available on the market, obviously. This is just mine. So this is the lower anvil of the planishing hammer that's 36 inch radius. And I will work the whole area that matches that radius with this anvil. So this whole area here, the flat part of this hood is a 36 inch radius. So that's the anvil I'm gonna use for there. Now here, we've got a totally different radius. We've got closer to a six inch radius. And so I need to choose a different anvil which is my six inch radius anvil to work this area. And what that's gonna allow me to do is it's gonna allow the metal to lay right on there and the hammer to touch the top of it. It's gonna try and take the shape of the lower anvil. That's its easiest way to settle is whatever the shape this is. So we're gonna work it kind of up and down and all over this. Actually, this side's pretty good. It'll mostly be this side. The tree damage was this way. So our most wrinkly part of the hood is right here. Yeah, let's just get to it right now. I'll do the, uh, the six inch radius first. I'm gonna start on the bottom here. Do a couple passes. All right, before I get into the planishing hammer because it's kind of a lazy way, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of uh, just kind of how I would planish it by hand. I don't have the best technique in the world, but I'm just gonna hit it a bunch of times and smooth it all out. You know, while I'm doing this planishing, it is still a little bit of hammer on dolly off technique. There are a lot of little small spots and you can kind of feel with the dolly, the dolly rocking on the spot that needs to be pushed up and you hammer around that. So if I've got a little crease here, I rock the dolly on it and I'm hammering a bunch of times all the way around to just slowly push those little things up. That's kind of uh, all part of smoothing it out right now. Right here, I don't know if you can really see it that easy, but. I'll just work this little crease. If you can kind of get really close up here, there's a tiny little crease going this way. If I put some dye on here and sanded it, you'd see right in that spot, I can feel a crease. So I rock my dolly on the back side of that. And I work around the crease. And then you can start to feel when the dolly is getting closer to the metal and you can start to hear that the dolly is uh, making contact through the metal to the hammer, and that's when you can start planishing it out. You hear that? I'm going right over the crease, and you hear the dolly all the way through now. Now there's no crease. So that's, that's how you do it by hand. I'm gonna get onto the hammer, because I'm sweating. <laughs> so this is the beauty of a little planishing hammer that's portable. You can bring it right to the piece, Bring it on. Just adjust it till it touches the metal. And right now I do have my six inch radius, which is what we want all over here. Just gonna get into a little bit of this right now. Got a little too much. With a machine like this, depending on how much airflow it has, how much pressure you have, I've got like a little cheater right here, a little valve that regulates my pressure. If you go kind of all balls on it, it's gonna stretch it and make a mess. So you always wanna make sure you dial it down so that it's just planishing, not stretching. This process takes a long time, so I'm gonna show you a little spot here with the six inch die, and then I'm gonna show you a little spot here with the 36 inch WD-40. It's always a good one for something like this. It's metal on metal, so you'd like a little bit of lubrication there.
Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Just to illustrate my point, I'm just gonna back this out so I can change the die. Give it a little wipe and come up close and see how smooth this got. See, you can probably see the shine. This was the most crinkled spot right here. You can see how rough it was. Maybe you could pan over and see how smooth it is now just with a few minutes of the planishing hammer. You could work this for a couple of hours and get it, get it really, really good. So I'm just gonna swap the die now. We'll do a little spot up here with the 36. See these crinkles? Here, I'll shine it up for a second. You'll really be able to see the crinkles in there. Okay, here we go. Now we still have a long ways to go with it. And like I said in the beginning, there is a little bit of stretch that's in this panel that does need to come out. So we will have to come in and do a little bit of heat shrinking or a little bit of shrinking disc to get those areas down. But all in all, I mean, like I said, another few minutes with the planishing hammer and we're looking really good here now. Give you a little bit of a coat so you can see. See a lot of these crinkles have already come out. There's a few spots like I said, that are a little bit high. I think shrinking disc will be the best way to take those out. That's the basics of hammer and dolly technique and what you need to know to try and get some of these dents out, what dollies to use, what hammers to use. I hope that you learned something from the video and enjoyed part two of the hammer and dolly techniques. Thank you for watching Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher. Don't forget to like, hit notifications, subscribe to the channel, tell your buddies. We're here twice a week. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.